Hello, how are you? The 16 novels listed for this year's Women's Prize for Fiction have just been announced, and it is very exciting. <laughs> of course I am excited, but honestly, this is such an interesting group of books. So I'm going to go through the list and give short summaries uh, of each of the novels and my thoughts or feelings about them, and I would be so keen to hear in the comments below uh, what you think about the list as a whole, if you've read many of these books, or which novels you're really interested interested in reading, because yeah, like I said, such an interesting group. Uh, some of these novels I've read, and uh, I think a few of them are really brilliant. I'm so happy to see uh, prize attention being given to them. Uh, some other novels on the list I have more mixed feelings about, and so I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, some of the books I've been wanting to read, and so I'm so glad this prize is giving me a push to actually get to, to reading them. And then some of the novels I've not really heard that much uh, about before, so so keen to explore them now. And we have another year, yet again, of not having Joyce Carol Oates on the list. That's okay, I'm not bitter about it at all. <laughs> um, uh, but out of these 60 novels, I've actually read nine of them, uh, which is a pretty high hit rate. I wasn't expecting to have read so many of them already. And uh, But uh, between Anna and I and the, the guesses we made in uh, previous video, uh, uh, we only guessed between us six of the 16 novels, um, so that's actually uh, less of a, a high rate than what we usually uh, get for, for the list. But it's always just a fun, silly guessing game, you know, thinking what might be on any book prize list. So looking at this group of books, it is a really interesting mixture because uh, there's a whole range of styles of writing uh, in these different novels, and they cover a number of different subjects and themes. Uh, some of them are overlapping. Uh, there does seem to be uh, a theme of like sibling relationships um, through a few of the different novels. And I feel like there's also a real mixture of books, um, some of which have been very popular and lauded and much talked about, or at least amongst my you know circle of readers that, that I follow. And then there are other books uh, which I feel like have sort of gone under the radar and um, I haven't heard much uh, about before. So I'm looking Looking forward to finding out more about them and reading them myself, of course. So looking at the list of books, going in alphabetical order, starting off with The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, which Anna and I were both hoping and expecting to see on the list. It's been a much hyped and discussed novel and much lauded novel ever since it was first published in the beginning of summer last year. And I know that can be a slight impediment sometimes, these books, which it feels like everyone is talking about and you almost feel like pressured to read it and, and you can almost have this reaction to be like, well, I want to wait for the hype to die down or for I don't want to read what everyone else is reading. But honestly, this novel is so brilliant and good and complex and surprising, I think, in a lot of ways. When you get into the story of it and how it plays out, um, it's very surprising. So this is one of the books that I mentioned that is about a sibling relationship. It's about two black women uh, who grow up in the American American South in the 50s and 60s, and they are very light-skinned, and so one of the sisters um, grows up to pass as white, and then the other sister uh, marries and has a very dark-skinned child, which she brings back to uh, their community, um, and which is slightly intolerant of her. So it's about the, the lives of these two different women and the, the lives of their daughters as they grow up and how their lives intersect with each other or don't. And it is so intriguing how the, the, the plot plays out in that way. There's lots of plot twists and turns, but also the way it looks at identity as a whole, whether we can create our own selves or if we're sort of locked into this state of being, you know, based upon our history and our and our genealogy and lineage and and all of those questions and our upbringing and and yeah, and the, the way it, it asks those questions, you know, not just about race, but uh, also about class and sexuality and gender identity. It's, it's so fascinating and really worth reading and wonderful. Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. I've not read this novel, uh, but I've, I've heard lots of really good things about it, so I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, so it's about a uh, English woman who is a, a journalist and a feature writer, and uh, she's been very unlucky in love, and she comes across this story about 
about a Swiss woman who has apparently given a virgin birth. And so she starts to write about this woman and gets、uh, very involved with this woman and her family and her daughter and sort of entangled in their lives. And,、uh, and the story plays out from there. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This is about a man who lives in a giant, fabulous house filled with all these、uh, bizarre and fascinating sculptures,、uh, which he spends his days cataloging as he moves through all of these different rooms. And he lives there alone,、uh, except there's a, another man who sometimes dwells within the house and who he has scheduled meetings with. And it's all very mysterious and strange. And you're wondering through a lot of it, like, what is really going on here? Because it's told from his perspective. So you see it all through his limited perspective. But then gradually it uncovers what's really happening in the background and the, the sinister things that are, are happening behind the scenes. And it is so tense and fascinating、um, how this plays out. It's very like, psychologically fascinating, I, I think. And,、uh, and actually, I was expecting this novel to, to be on the, the long list. But weirdly, strategically, I didn't list it when I was making my predictions with Anna because I was sure she was going to list this, but she didn't. And so, yeah, but,、um, but anyway, we, we both have read this and、uh, loved reading it. I read it over, over the winter months, and it was just a wonderful, immersive, imaginative story. And surely many of you will have read、uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, this wonderful, fantastical novel. And, and this is a very different kind of novel, but it is, it is、uh, fantastical in an equally compelling way. The Golden Rule by Amanda Craig. I'm so happy to see this novel on the list. I read it at the beginning of the year. So the premise of this story is、uh, you know, Patricia Highsmith's novel, Strangers on a Train, about two men、um, who are strangers that meet on a train and plot to kill each other's wives, or at least one of them does. And、uh, so Amanda Craig takes this story and brings it more into the present day and makes it about two women that are strangers to each other that meet on a train.、Um, they're from different classes.、Uh, one of them is、uh, from a very privileged、um, class, and the other one is from a working class background. And so, literally, these women are in two different classes on the, the train. And,、uh, and so, the one in upper class invites the one in third class to, to join her. And there they get talking to each other over some glasses of wine and discussing their, their horrible husbands. And,、um, and the, one of them proposes that they get rid of the other. And so, the story plays out from there with all of its moral complexities.、Um, but it,、um, it's a、yeah, really interesting portrait of modern day、uh, Britain and、uh, you know, the inequities in our society and how、uh, people from the, the middle and upper class really don't think about or, or understand the desperation of, of working class people that you know, are struggling day to day. And so she gets into all of these social issues and also about the, the way that、um, women are abused. And, and it takes them very seriously. But it's also a very thrilling story. Story. And it also shows a really interesting side where、um, you can slightly misjudge、uh, men as well and, and have sort of wrong expectations about them. And there's also really interesting things in it about narrative itself and, and like video game narratives because there's a character that creates、uh, video games in this. And, and I think that's a really interesting discussion to have about because the narrator of this is a very keen reader and loves books and so finds it slightly difficult to understand. How the narratives of video games can be so compelling.、Uh, but you have writers like David Mitchell,、um, who talked about in an interview last summer how over lockdown he's really got into playing video games because he thinks the narratives of them are so compelling and interesting and can be more so than a lot of novels. And so I think that's a really interesting discussion to have. And it's just like one element of the story when there's、uh, yeah, a number of different、uh, storylines and issues at play. In this novel. And I have to admit, there are some parts of the book which didn't entirely work for me、um, that I thought were slightly overdone.、Uh, but on the whole, it's a really interesting novel and one that's very well worth reading. And, and I'm so glad to see Amanda Craig getting、um, some award recognition because she's written a number of interesting novels over the years. And so, yeah, this is just wonderful to see. Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan.、Uh, this has been a much talked about debut novel. That was published last year.
about a young Irish woman um, who's slightly uncertain what she wants to do in her life, and she moves to Hong Kong uh, to teach English um, to students there. And she meets a man uh, who's in finance that she has an affair with, and their relationship is is sort of up in the air about what it really is. Uh, but she also meets a woman that she develops a very strong attachment for. So it's sort of this this love triangle, and it is so funny because there's lots of lines in the novel uh, that make this very astute commentary uh, about the lives of young people and the use of modern technology and uh, using apps and social media, but also so much in it about language itself. You know, she's teaching uh, English um, to these uh, students in the Far East, and and she, being an Irish woman, um, there's uh, different conceptions between British English and Irish English, and all the cultural history behind that. And it's it's so interesting uh, how this this novel plays out, and it discusses all of these different themes. And so I think this is a wonderful novel that I really enjoyed reading. Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi, which was also shortlisted for the Booker Prize last year, uh, about a mother-daughter relationship, uh, which is so tense in how it plays out in the adult daughter uh, needs to care for her mother who is showing signs of dementia and uh, and how this mother never really cared for her. And I'll read you the first line of the novel because I think it really encapsulates the feeling of this book. I would be lying if I said my mother's misery had never given me pleasure. And it really continues on with that sort of playing out the complexities of that sentiment um, throughout the, the whole novel and this very tense relationship and very complicated relationship, but also looking at the complexities of memory and uh, subjective memory and whose memory we can trust. And it's so interesting how it plays out. So I think this is a masterfully constructed novel, as well as being one that is so fascinating on a number of themes, as well as being a really compelling story about a mother-daughter relationship. Because of You by Don French. This is slightly surprising for me uh, because I adore Don French. Uh, she's a brilliant comedian. Of course, I love French and Saunders, and I've been listening to her recent podcast um, that she's done with Jennifer Saunders uh, called Titting About. And so I would really suggest looking up uh, that podcast if you just want to laugh. And if you enjoy their personalities, it's just them bantering about a whole range of random subjects. And uh, so, yeah, I adore Don French, but I didn't realize that she was a novelist. Uh, this this is her fourth novel, and I, I don't know, I just never heard about this before. I'd known that she wrote an autobiography, but just, yeah, hadn't heard about this. And so this novel is a story of two very different women uh, who are pregnant and uh, both go to the hospital to uh, go into labor at the same time. And one of the mothers emerges from the hospital with a baby that she absolutely loves, and the other mother emerges from the hospital with empty arms. And and, it, uh, and then it goes into the future, um, showing uh, the, the stories of these women going forward and how they wrestle with these different ideas of motherhood. And yeah, and obviously I've not read this because um, I wasn't aware that Don French was a novelist, but, um, but yeah, I'm really keen to, to read what her style of fiction is like. Um, I've heard this is a very funny as well as moving novel, uh, though I've heard seen very mixed reviews of it, like scanning through all the reviews of people some people really loved it and other people really didn't. So that's made me even more curious in some ways. And I don't know if this is slightly cynical view, but I, I wonder slightly sometimes with book prizes if they're almost court uh, sort of celebrity authors as ways of kind of bringing more attention to the prize by putting uh, these celebrity authors on the list. And obviously that, that, is, that is just a total speculation on my part uh, because I haven't read the novel. I don't know about the judge's decision. And, and uh, so, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I can't help having this slight feeling that this might have been a contributing factor to her being on the list. Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. Yay! I'm so happy to see this novel on the list. I love Claire. 
Clare's novels. I have read all of them. Uh, she's such a fascinating writer. And I have to admit, she's a personal friend of mine. Uh, we have had a book group with each other for a number of years. And we haven't been able to meet lately, obviously, for obvious reasons. Uh, but she is such a great reader, too, and such an astute, really fascinating reader that makes a lot of interesting points about the book she reads. Um, so it's really well worth following her on social media for her thoughts about what she's reading as well. And uh, But yeah, she's a wonderful writer. And I'm just reading uh, this novel now. I'm about 50 pages into it. Um, it's the story of a brother and sister, again, a sibling relationship, uh, who are in their early 50s, and but still live at home with their mother. And at the beginning of the novel, their mother dies. And it's about what they're, they're going to do going forward, because they've lived a very isolated and rural lifestyle. Um, they're, they're working class individuals. And so it gets into the, the heartache of their situation, uh, but also the, the practical difficulties of financially handling things uh, going forward, both with the funeral and yeah, managing the, the cottage they live in and, and their lives. And, uh, and she is so, her writing is so atmospheric. She really brings to life this cottage and the rural landscape that, that they live in, but, but also really psychologically interesting how she gets into the characters' minds and thoughts and their relationships with each other. And it is, she's so good. And uh, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to finishing reading this. Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Gyasi. I coincidentally just read this novel last week. And uh, in our, my video with Anna, she talked about how much she loved it. And I fell in love with it too. I think it is really brilliant. I mean, I had high expectations because I, I loved her novel Homegoing, uh, which by the way, look at these two novels beside each other. I love the design of the, the covers, the UK covers of these books and how well they go alongside each other. But anyway, that's, that's a, that's a just an aesthetic point. Uh, but the content of this novel is so brilliant as well. It's about a young woman who's a neuroscientist in the final stages of her PhD, um, studying the, the minds of lab rice, lab rice, lab mice, as she um, does experiments on them and studying their behavior um, in regards to addiction. And this has, this subject matter has a very personal take for her because her uh, elder brother mother um, died from an overdose when she was a teenager and her mother suffers very badly from depression and uh, so yeah it's it's about how she explores the the science of this um, but also about how her own religious background impacts upon her view of the world and and how she approaches sciences you know there's this um, almost this old stereotype about the incompatibility between science and religion and and she, her personal take on this um, gives a, a really unique point of view about it, um, sort of saying that that, uh, that that apparent contradiction is kind of nonsense because of how she understands these, these things through her own point of view. And, and it's, it's so fascinating, but also a very, very moving story. And it sounds like dry talking about those themes from the outside, but it's honestly so heart-wrenching um, how she depicts this, this family. And it's, uh, it's interesting how it's almost the opposite of homegoing rather than an expansive story looking at multiple generations. It's about the collapse of a, a generation till um, it's just her that's left in this family. And, and it's, it's uh, so wonderful and admirable and intelligent. And uh, yeah, so I, I think this is a very strong contender. And even though this is only her second novel, I think it is high time that this author gets award recognition. How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherie Jones. I've not read this novel, but I got a copy of it at the beginning of the year, and I've been really wanting to get to it, so I'm so glad the prize is, is pushing me to, to finally read this. So this is set in Barbados. It's about mainly about four different characters and about how they want to escape their legacy of violence. Uh, because this is a very divided community um, in terms of wealth. There, there are some very poor uh, parts of this community, and then there are very wealthy parts of the community. And the story is about a burglary that goes wrong and uh, how events play out from there. And yeah, I've heard really great things about it, so I'm very much looking forward to reading it. Luster by Raven Leilani, another novel that Anne and I were both hoping and expecting to see on this list, and another book that is as much hyped, but really deserves
loves all of the talk uh, about it because it is so brilliantly constructed, uh, but also so compelling and really a juicy story. Like one you're reading and you're like, I can't believe she is going there with that. And so the, the story is about a young black woman that works in publishing and uh, she is sort of wayward in her life and she's having lots of affairs with men. And she meets a white man uh, who's married and in an open relationship on a app and uh, how she starts having a relationship, uh, not just with him, but gets involved with his family, uh, so his wife and their adopted black daughter as, as well. And it gets into all the, the complexities of that and follows the, the story in a really riveting way, uh, but also very funny cutting social commentary. There's lots of lines in this which are just absolutely delicious to, to read and uh, yeah, really make you think as well as adding to the story. And I just think this is a great novel. No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. So I read this recently and this is another much hyped novel because Patricia Lockwood is very famous and very popular on social media, though I hadn't really heard of her before. I, that slightly shameful that I, I hadn't heard. I think I'd probably seen mention of her before, but um, yeah, didn't really know anything about her. So didn't have the same excitement that a lot of readers had going into this. And so this is a story about a, a woman who is famous for being on social media and goes, travels around the world giving lectures um, based on that. Uh, so very much like Patricia Lockwood herself. Uh, but And so it's an examination of that social media and online culture in a, in a really fascinating way. In the first part of this book, it's a sort of look at that whole lifestyle and how we've really created a whole new language, you know, based on this sort of social media speak and the way that people interact with each other online, which is really fascinating in cataloging all these you know, different instances of different memes and and uh, and movements in, in social media and changes in it and uh, yeah, how it changes uh, the way we interact with each other, um, which is really fascinating and worth looking at and very fun and uh, how she, she looks at that. And then the second half of the novel is about her relationship with her sister and uh, and her sister's child and the, the tension and the heartache of that and how she's trying to deal with that as someone whose sensibility has been so shaped by this online culture, how she translates that and, and is trying to um, yeah, relate in these real, this real world instance um, with this sort of filter on her mind. And uh, and it's quite interesting how that plays out, but it didn't entirely work for me. I felt like she was too often reaching for this same sort of humor that was in the first part of the book, which she wasn't able to achieve in there. And I, I know that she was um, trying to show the, the the difficulty of that, of, of that's really the, the tragic consequence that um, of, of how to, to deal with these real world things when this is your, your mindset now. And, and I, I know that's sort of what she was trying to do, but I didn't have the emotional connection to it, say that Anna did, like Anna talked about in our video, how much she absolutely loved this. And, and, uh, and yeah, and I just didn't really feel the same way. But I'm sure we'll have discussions about that in the, the future going forward in talking about this this long list. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I think this is an interesting choice, but it's not one that I would have put on the list. I think this novel is very funny and perceptive about online culture, but I do wonder if you're not that familiar with uh, social media and, and, uh, and this online culture, how much you would really get out of this book. And so I'd be very interested to hear from people, you know, who don't spend a lot of time on social media and try to read this novel, um, how much you get out of it or don't get out of it. Consent by Annabelle Lyne. I've not read this novel. Um, it's another book that's about sibling relationships. So uh, it's about twin sisters, um, but then also about another pair of siblings and uh, some different tragedies that occur in their lives. And I've heard that this novel begins as a, a story about familial relationships, but then turns more into like a mystery and a thriller in some ways in the, the, the different terms that the, the story takes. So I think that sounds so compelling and I'm really intrigued to read it because I haven't heard much uh, about it before this list. Nothing But Blue Sky by Kathleen McMahon. Uh, this is a story about a man uh, who thinks he has the perfect marriage uh, until his wife dies. And
and then he starts finding more about her past and how things sort of changed in their relationship without him really noticing and about his process of uh, uncovering more about her, her life than he he knew was ever there and I've not read this and though I'm sort of surprised I've, I've not read it and not really heard much about it before um, because it's by an Irish writer I love new Irish writing and also really interestingly this author is the granddaughter of the great Irish author Mary Lavin uh, so I have a book of hers here and she's a great short story writer um, I've read lots of her short stories both in this and and in Irish anthology and uh, and also Joyce Carol Oates uh, thinks she is one of the greatest writers of the last century so there's that as well but uh, but I love finding out about a literary lineage uh, you know Kazuo Ishiguro's uh, daughter has is uh, just about to publish her first novel as well so I think it's really fascinating to see these literary families and uh, this is another instance of one. Detransition Baby by Tori Peters this is another novel which has been much hyped and talked about or at least amongst my circle it feels like everyone has been reading this and I'm really keen to to read it myself now so it's the story of three different women um, who some of whom are transgendered um, some are cisgendered and it's about their relationships and the difficulty or the challenges of having a child and uh, yeah it just sounds like such a good moving story and so yeah I'm really looking forward to it and finally there is summer by Ali Smith a novel I love so much, a writer whose work I love so much and I made a whole review video uh, last summer when this came out, uh, a very sentimental uh, review about this because uh, yeah I just feel like my connection with this book and this whole cycle of the, the seasonal quartet that she's written over the past four years, it's so, I feel so personally entwined in it because she's been writing about our current times as we've been living them so I feel like I've sort of seen what's been happening in the past four years through the filter of, of Ali Smith and it's made me look at things from a different perspective that I really appreciate but also has built the story of a number of different characters which culminates in this as they come together so it's sort of interesting it's another book that I wonder if you're not familiar with the seasonal quartet how much you would get out of reading this on its own I feel like I can't judge that because I am just I just have such a personal connection with it having read these books year after year and been following this story and all these different characters and so uh, yeah I, I'd be interested to know from people how you feel about that but I do think this novel is is brilliant in the in both its its playfulness and language as as Ali Smith always does in her her writing but in the individual story she builds in this of a, of a young boy who um, who has really fascist very dark ideas as well as being very intelligent and so she shows him in this complex way as as well as the story of his mother who was an actress um, and who uh, who voted to, to leave the EU and so there's lots of complicated um, feelings portrayed in this and and um, perspectives which you wouldn't naturally assume that Ali Smith would go to and I think it's really fascinating the way she she looks at these different perspectives and plays out the story both in the the story in this novel itself but also the the build-up of um, the, the cumulative story over these four novels and the different themes and ideas she's explored over them as well as the overarching story and, and it's just a brilliant 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 book and so uh, yeah I'm so happy to see her get more award recognition even though she's Ali Smith has won the Women's Prize for Fiction before and so um, but 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 yeah it really deserves a place on here and especially to be honored for this monumental writing project she has done over the past four years. So those are all of the books on the long list. Uh, like I said, let me know in the comments below what you think about the list, uh, what you're excited to read next, um, and uh, yeah, what you would suggest I read next out of the novels that, that I haven't read. I'm really looking forward to joining in this year and joining in all the discussion and all of the arguments and dissent because, you know, hopefully we can have friendly disagreements about some of the novels. I know we always 
won't agree on them, but that is part of the, the fun and what makes it so interesting uh, following these book prizes. So thank you for watching, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.